tire strategy, heavy lockups, and manufacturer domination. Well, until it mattered most. Buckle up as I recap the Motul course to Monterey at Laguna Seca. Man oh man was it a beautiful weekend for racing at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. The sun was shining and there were plenty of stories to follow throughout the weekend. One of the stories that we were watching was JDC Miller Motorsports and their first race with their Porsche 963 customer entry. In fact, this is the first time they've had the car on track, except for a little shakedown that Porsche basically did for them at their testing track. Andretti Autosport, they were also joining the GTD grid with an Aston Martin. And of course, there was the question of could BMW be the fourth different manufacturer to win in the GTP class in just their fourth race of the season. However, there was one story before the weekend even got underway that everyone was talking about. And it was these new paved runoff areas around the track, specifically on the exits of turn five and turn nine. Jordan Taylor posted this on Twitter saying, yet another great racetrack has lost its character. Sad. And upon first look, it is quite sad. You see racetracks, historic racetracks, adding on these runoff areas that really don't penalize a driver for, for pushing the limits as much as older school racetracks do. And it seemed like Laguna was taking a step in that direction. However, it was later revealed that these improvements, we'll call them, were done before a scheduled repave. And not to necessarily add additional runoff space for drivers to try and exploit track limits. However, this was necessary for track drainage. The track was recently plagued by heavy rains in the spring, and these new runoff areas will help significantly with drainage. Should be noted that I did not hear of any other planned changes to the track or layout with the upcoming repave. When the cars hit the track for practice, there was only really one notable incident that I'll tell you about here, and that was the 0-1 Cadillac Chip Ganassi Racing entry. They actually got hard into the tire barriers. Sebastian Borde would go off in turn six, hitting the barriers hard. He would later be released from the infield care center. In GTP, the Porsches would be fast all practice long, and they would carry that speed into qualifying. Matt Campbell put his Porsche 963 on pole position with a time of a 114.774 to beat the sister car, the number six, by just under a tenth of a second. Colin Braun in the number 60 Meyer Shank Racing Acura would be two tenths off the pole setting time and would roll off the grid P3. LMP2 qualifying was quite entertaining to watch actually as George Kurtz would take the pole in that class. He got in a late flying lap that would edge out Ben Keating in the number 52 PR1 Matheson Motorsports entry. And this would come after Ben Keating's at the time pole sitting lap would be deleted. Meanwhile, in the GTD classes, it was all Porsche dominating both of those classes. The number nine FAF Motorsports Porsche would take pole position in GTD Pro, and that would be at the hands of Klaus Bockler, a nice rebound for Klaus after he crashed the car in qualifying at Sebring. And Alec Udell would put the number 92 Kelly Moss Racing Porsche, a car that we haven't really talked a whole lot about this season, on pole in GTD. Now I mentioned at the beginning of this video that it was beautiful weather in Laguna. There was a touch and go moment there and that came in the form of fog on Sunday morning that decided to put a little bit of a delay onto the morning's activities. Thick fog rolled in and ended up pushing the start of the two support series races that were set to roll off before the WeatherTech Championship as well as the planned warm up session for the WeatherTech Championship. Eventually the fog lifted enough where they were able to get the racing in and didn't really affect things too, too much at all. The or normal grid walk that takes place on pit lane had to be done in Park Ferme area, but ultimately the race was still able to get underway on time. When the race got underway, it was hectic on the opening lap in the hard braking zone for the hairpin. The pole sitting Porsches both locked up along with a few other prototypes, but ultimately it cost those two Porsches quite a number of positions. Despite the lockups though, the prototypes were able to navigate this first heavy braking zone cleanly. Should be noted though, the number six Porsche that I just mentioned, one of the cars that had a heavy lockup, they flat spotted their tires significantly, and this would come back to haunt them later in the race. Now, when it came to the GTDs, they weren't able to navigate through the opening sets of corners 
quite as cleanly. In the opening few corners, the number 66 Acura would get spun around and picked up some damage in the process that would leave debris on track and ultimately lead to a very quick opening full course yellow. Everything would be cleaned up quickly though and we'd go racing after just a 10 minute delay. After the quick cleanup, the race would resume, but the full course yellow would be thrown just 10 minutes after going back green. This time for the number 94 Andretti Autosport GTD. Yes, the brand new GTD entry to the grid. They would find themselves crashed into the pit lane entrance after they had contact from the pole sitting Porsche driven by Matt Campbell. Campbell was ultimately served with an incident responsibility penalty, which I don't know if I totally agree with that, but regardless, he had a penalty to serve, which almost dropped him off the lead lap as a result. The carnage would continue in the first half of this race as John Ferrano in his LMP2 would have a heavy off into the barriers. There would be a full course yellow required to retrieve his car and Ferrano was actually transported to a local hospital for observation. He would later be released. After a further 30 minutes of racing and just after we crossed the halfway mark of the race, the full course yellow would be thrown yet again. This time it was for the number 12 Lexus, which had come to a stop just off track at the final corner. Pit stops would cycle through for a final time, but this was quite an eventful pit stop cycle for the GTD cars and just an overall full course yellow cycle, I guess. You see the number 23 GTD Pro leading Heart of Racing Aston Martin would incorrectly take the wave around. The second place number three Corvette, who was right behind the 23, would follow him through and take the wave around as well. However, since neither of those cars were eligible to take the wave around, they received a hefty two minute and 50 second penalty that would take them completely out of contention. Now, unfortunately, they thought that they were eligible for the wave around because of where the GTD leader was. The GTD leader was behind them in the safety car queue. However, since the wave around is determined by class leader and not overall combined GTD leaders, it caused some confusion. Now, if you're confused, don't worry. The drivers were confused, everybody was a little bit confused, and I do plan on talking about it a little bit more in a future video. But for now, let's go back to the race, and when it resumed, we had 42 minutes of uninterrupted green flag running right through to the end of the race. And let me tell you, it did not disappoint. There was a great racing to be seen in all four of the classes, and especially in the GTP class, where we saw significant tire drop off that would shake up the final results. The 0-1 Cadillac Chip Ganassi Racing entry would take the lead and not relinquish it. A great tire strategy decision would lead them to the GTP class win. Now Sebastian Borde handed off the 0-1 to Renga van de Zander for his final stint, and it was really Renga who just got in that car and grabbed control of the race almost immediately. In fact, Cadillac really controlled most of this race, I thought. Pipo Durrani in the number 31 Action Express Racing Cadillac, he ran the opening stints for the 31. He was flying in that thing for the first half of this race. Now Alexander Sims, who got into that 31 entry for the closing stint of the race, he would fade, but he would still hang on to a third place finish. Meanwhile, the number six Porsche, who was started by Matt Campbell and finished by Nick Tandy, put in a great final stint to salvage second place and ultimately salvage the weekend for Porsche. Now you hear me say salvage the weekend for Porsche, second place is a pretty good finish. However, considering that they locked out the front row in the GTP class, and considering the turbulent race that the number seven had, I think Porsche is going to be disappointed walking away from this, only salvaging one car on the podium. Now that number seven car, they were involved in the accident with the GTD Aston Martin, but Felipe Nazar also got into the wall on the exit of turn 10 after a safety car restart. Just pushing a little bit too hard on cold tires, he went off track, brushed the barrier, and that number seven car in going off sustained some fairly significant damage, I would say, and required some lengthy repairs on pits that would just take them completely out of contention. Now we talked a little bit about tire strategy. You see, about half of the GTP class cars they took a new set of tires fairly early on in this race, with the other half of the grid choosing not to change tires. Now, some cars, like the two Porsches for instance, they were kind of forced to take tires due to the extreme flat spotting that they had on their fronts 
as a result of that opening lap lockup. These teams that did take tires early ultimately were forced to double stint tires at the end, such as the number 60 Meyershank Racing Acura, and this cost them immensely down the stretch. They were, they definitely did not have the pace to keep up with the teams that had fresh tires at the end of this. Now, also of note, the class debut for JDC Miller Motorsports with their Porsche 963 resulted in a 7th place finish. Considering that they were able to complete all of the laps and participate in all of the sessions really without any major issues, I think that's a pretty solid opening weekend for them. In LMP2, it was the number 11 TDS Racing Orica that was driven by Mikael Jensen and Steven Thomas that would take victory. This was TDS Racing's first victory in the WeatherTech Championship as they beat out the number 52 PR1 Matheson Motorsports entry and the number 04 pole sitting CrowdStrike Racing entry. As we talked about earlier in GTD Pro, the number 3 and the number 23 would take themselves out of contention with that late race safety car mistake. However, the other three cars in the class would capitalize on the mistake, with the number 79 WeatherTech Racing Mercedes of Denny Uncadella and Jules Gunyan taking home the win. They beat out the number 14 Vassar Sullivan Lexus, as well as the number 9 Faf Motorsports Porsche, who wrapped up the podium. There were a number of penalties that were handed out to the GTD Pro classes. We talked about the two a moment ago, but the number 9 Faf Motorsports entry... Well, they received a drive through penalty, actually a stop plus 60 second hold penalty after they ran a red light at pit lane exit. The penalty almost saw them lose a lap, but they were able to hang in there, get an opportune full course yellow, and ultimately capitalize on some of the late mistakes from other class competitors. In GTD, it was just Porsche domination in this one. The number 91 and number 92 Kelly Moss Racing with Riley Motorsport entries, they led 55 of the 97 laps in this race en route to a first and a third place finish. The number 91 entry driven by Kay Van Burlow and Alan Metney picked up the win ahead of the number 97 Turter Motorsports BMW with the sister Kelly Moss Racing number 92 rounding out the podium. In this one, Alan Metney put up a masterclass in that final stint, pulling out to an almost 10 second lead over the course of the final 40 minutes on, on route to that victory. In this one, it was really a race of two halves. The first half was a bit messy and really never got a good flow going, while the second half had a much better flow to it and we witnessed some amazing racing. What did you think though? Let me know down in the comments. The WeatherTech Championship was not the only IMSA series at Laguna Seca this weekend. The Lamborghini Super Trofeo opened their season with two wins for the da Danny Formel and Kyle Marcelli duo as they swept both of those races. Meanwhile, there was some more brilliant Mazda Itami 2 MX-5 Cup action that took place as well. Connor Zilich took the win in race one, and Aaron Johnson took home his first victory in the series in race two. Race two was plagued by some difficult, foggy conditions. Actually, the second race of the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Cup was also plagued by these foggy conditions. But in the MX-5 Cup race, Zane Hodgson had a huge wreck in race two that saw his car flip multiple times through the air before it landed upside down. Luckily though, he was able to walk away from the wreck with no injuries. Meanwhile, in the Michelin Pilot Challenge, it was Christian Simzak and Kenny Marillo that took the GS win there. And in TCR, Mark Wilkins and Mason Filippi we're on the top step of the podium. The Michelin Pilot Challenge is actually the next IMSA series that's going to be taking to the track. They'll be hitting the streets of Detroit, while the rest of the series are back in action at Watkins Glen. In the championship standings, well, the 0-1 Cadillac has entered the championship picture in GTP. It is still the number 6 Porsche Penske Motorsports entry that leads there with 1,307 points. They are 25 points ahead of the number 31 Wheel and Engineering Cadillac. In LMP2, the former championship points leader of Tower Motorsports, well, they fell to third after coming into this race leading. Instead, it is the number 11 TDS Racing entry that leads with 730 points. That's 63 points ahead of number 52 PR1 Matheson Motorsports entry. In GTD Pro, there are some gaps that are emerging here, but really four of the five teams are still seriously in the hunt for this one. The number 14 Vassar Sullivan Lexus on the back of just consistency 
is leading the class here. They have a 41 point lead over the number 79 WeatherTech Racing Mercedes. And in GTD, things are starting to get a little bit spread out here. However, it's important to acknowledge there's still tons of racing to go this season. But it is the number one Paul Miller Racing BMW that leads by 63 points over the number 70 Inception Racing McLaren. Now, I think it's safe to say that up until this point in the season, IMSA has failed to disappoint. Daytona was special. Sebring was wild. Long Beach was hectic. And Laguna really rewarded teams for nailing the strategy. It begs the question, what will Watkins Glen bring us? And what stories are we going to be following heading into that race? Make sure that you get caught up on all the recent IMSA news right here. A big shout out and thank you to all of the Patreon supporters. If you do want to support the show, then you can head to patreon.com slash off in the S's. Once again, though, thanks for tuning in. I hope everyone has a great race weekend. It doesn't go off in the S's.